Uh, all right. So, uh, so let's begin uh, with the quadratic equation um, and see how to use uh, the techniques of perturbation theory to, to derive its roots. Uh, so one of the advantages of using the quadratic equation uh, to begin with is that we know the exact solutions. And so uh, this will allow us to compare the solutions that we obtain using the techniques of perturbation theory with the exact solutions and also allow us to actually develop the whole theory of um, or the whole formalism how to use perturbation theory um, and comparing the two solutions the exact and the solution that, you, that we obtain from perturbation theory will allow us to develop more of an intuition uh, on how to use these techniques for many more complicated equations right so um, so let's get started uh, with uh, an equation of the form um, x squared plus 0.02x minus 1 is 0, right? So this is a second order equation, um, x squared um, uh, in, in the variable x, and uh, we know its roots. So the roots are, it will have two roots. Uh, the roots are x1 um, equals minus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 square plus 4 divided by 2 that's the first root and the second root is minus 0 0.02 minus 0 0.02 square plus 4 divided by 2 all right now um, if you uh, sort of plug in these numbers on your computer or calculator um, you'll find that x1 is um, very nearly equal to um, or let's write it here so x1 is approximately 0 0.99 whereas x2 is approximately minus 1.01 .01. okay um, now if you ask most people like what is 0 0.99 um, they'll tell you that okay 0 0.99 is approximately 1 and minus 1.01 .01 is approximately minus 1 so now this is interesting uh, because uh, if you go back to the uh, quadratic equation that we have and look at the middle term, right, and see that okay, if your solutions are nearly plus or minus one, um, the order of magnitude of this term is plus or minus 0 0.02. This term is minus one, which has order of magnitude one whereas x squared would also be very close to 1. And so this middle term, it's much smaller than the other two terms. Um, and, and this suggests that uh, we can look for a simpler equation to begin with, uh, which, is, which can be obtained by dropping the middle term and then looking for its solutions um, as a way of guessing, let's say, the zeroth or, or the zeroth order solution of the quadratic equation. So what's, what's, what, what's that equation? That approximate equation would be, so let's write it down here. So we can talk about an approximate equation. Approximate equation, um, let's get rid of this for now, would be x squared, just drop the middle term, minus one equals zero. And we know the roots of this equation are x1 equals 1 and x2 equals minus 1 and these are very close um, to the to, to, to the roots of this equation um, or rather to the approximate roots of this equation and that's really the key idea behind perturbation theory to take a more complicated equation and reduce it to a series of simpler equations that we can solve exactly and then build up our solution systematically um, or build up our solution by systematically improving upon it um, through a process uh, that we'll slowly uncover. Um, so, so in order to do that, let's, uh, let's go back to the quadratic equation and instead of looking specifically at this equation, um, we'll introduce a small parameter which will quantify the effect of the term that we are dropping. Um, and then, and that will create a family of equations in terms of a small parameter. Um, and once we solve for the roots of 
uh, this new equation in terms of the parameter epsilon, we'll we'll try and we, we'll see how the perturbative methods really comes about, right? So so so, so that that's that'll be a next step now.